Welcome back to Afternoon Live. It's the book filled with 75 recipes for delicious desserts, creating feelings of nostalgia and happiness. Here to share more about baking for fun, we welcome from Food Network Magazine Editorial Director Miley Carpenter. Thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. Hi, it's good to be here. This book is so fun. I mean, the title itself says Baking for Fun, and you've got cookies and cakes and pies, every category of deliciousness. Yes, we had to put the word fun in there because that's really the point of the book. This is not baking for stress. This is not baking because you have to. This is for people who just love getting into the kitchen and find really the joy in baking. Um, and they're easy, so that makes it fun. <laughs> it's not fun when you fail. So we have tested these recipes. We know they work. Um, there's a photo with every recipe to help you along, and we, we really tested them so we know they're foolproof. They are super simple. You've got everything dialed in. Tell me about the process of putting a book like this together. I know it takes a village, like you said, to get everything dialed in perfectly for readers. It does, but the, you know, this is, and this, these came out of Food Network Kitchen. They are absolute pros, but um, the trick with this book was that we really wanted everything to have a little bit of a fun twist. So we're taking really familiar baked goods like cupcakes and cookies and giving them just a little something to make them feel special and to have a little more fun with them. So that was the point. We really ran with that. Of course, now it's really baking season. I feel like the minute the weather turns, we all want to get in the kitchen and bake and get cozy. So um, that's what we have for you today. Just a bunch of of great fall baked goods. Yeah, tell me about a couple of the things you have on your counter. It looks just scrumptious. Sure, well, I'll make, I'll show you a couple of, of our favorite tricks in a second, but we have a red velvet fun cake, which is um, for red velvet lovers, this is a great twist on a typical red velvet cake where we have a cream cheese running through, like a tunnel of cream cheese, <laughs> amazing. Um, and then a cream cheese glaze on it, it's super fun. And then we have a maple, I know I always want maple in the fall, pumpkin spice is everybody's favorite, but maple for me is, is the flavor of fall. So we made some maple brownies. Um, and then this is one of my favorite pie tricks. This is a, like a cinnamon roll pie. No shame in buying store-bought dough. We bought a store-bought pie dough and we just covered it with cinnamon sugar and rolled it up like we were making cinnamon rolls and sliced it into little thin slices. And then that, we pressed that together to form the top of the pie. So that is a, a fun, incredibly easy trick for your next apple that pie. That sounds like heaven. That's where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it does smell good. I will tell you that. So we have some fun, easy tricks, and these are ones you can really do with any of your favorite recipes. This is a cupcake, and you know we all love a surprise inside. You just make a little slit in your cupcake, and you can fill it with anything you like. Here I have um, just some seedless jam, but you could put Nutella in here, you could put lemon curd, and then you frost it, and it's just so fun when people bite into this and find that, that filling in there. It's really, I think a lot of people think that fillings are baked into the cupcakes, but you just finish the cupcake and, and squirt it right in and you have a nice little little treat. We like to sprinkle some coarse sugar on top, gives it a little, little sparkle in the end. And it's that simple that you just have to poke a little ways in, you're not taking any dough out or anything like that. That was, you did that no. with no mess. Exactly, you don't have to take anything out, you don't have to prepare it, you bake a regular cupcake, just make a little slit with a paring knife like I did, and then the, the key is to have you know a piping bag and a piping chip but that's a great thing to have around for all sorts of baking tricks so i would highly recommend that and it's very low cost awesome what else do you have to show us there well these are my favorite these are pumpkin spice latte whoopie pies so we see pumpkin spice baked goods everywhere but these actually have the latte twist so we took a pumpkin spice whoopie pie which by the way we sized to be not the size of your head these are like normal <laughs> bite size whoopie pies um, and then for the filling, we put, we gave it the latte twist by adding a little instant coffee to the frosting. My personal tip to you there is to use decaf because I once used caffeinated and accidentally gave it to my child right oh, before no. bed. And she, <laughs> it was not, it was, it was a terrible, terrible Yeah, night. the sugar alone um, is enough for them. They don't need caffeine on top of it. So use the decaf, but but that instant coffee is such a great baking trick. It really adds richness. To, you can throw it into all sorts of a chocolate cake, throw in a little instant coffee, and it really makes it nice and rich. So for these whoopie pies, we roll them in non which are like the little tiny ball sprinkles, 
And this I love because you can choose any color. So this treat could be for any holiday or if you had a team event or a school event, you could pick your team colors, um, roll it in the nonpareils. And again, it's just that little extra something that kind of takes it to the next level. It looks like kind of a jumbo macaron, but probably a little bit simpler to accomplish. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's so much easier. I promise you it's so much easier than that. Okay, and what are those gorgeous cookies there? So these, again, you could do this with your favorite cookie. This. For this cookie, we used a basic chocolate chip cookie, and then we threw in some toffee chips, which is like a great secret ingredient. If you're making cookies, throw in some of these toffee chips. Everyone will be like, what is in there? Um, and we used dark chocolate chips instead of semi-sweet, which made it nice and rich and chocolatey. But the trick here is that if you have a special event or a bake sale, something like that, we took some white chocolate, very easy, melted it, and then just drizzle a little bit of white chocolate over half the cookie and it gives it this nice finishing touch that makes it feel you know a little more special than your basic chocolate chip cookie you can again grab the sprinkles make them festive for a holiday or you know a school event i would recommend everybody should have a drawer full of every color sprinkles because you never know when you'll need them that is so true and you really can make it your own any holiday any season i mean you've just shown us three incredible tricks and there are 75 recipes in this book so I'm excited to dive in. <laughs> I hope you do. Happy baking season. Thank you so much. It was great to chat with you. You too. The book, again, is Baking for Fun. We'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.